here's how to determine whether one thing is a sufficient condition for another thing. Here we're going to treat G as our target feature and A, B, and C, and D as our candidate features. What we want to know is whether any, either of A, B, C, and D are sufficient for G. So here's the definition of what we're calling a sufficient condition test. And that says that any candidate that is present when G is absent is eliminated as a possible sufficient condition of G. So we're representing in this table three different cases. Um, so in case one, A, B, C, and D are, are all present, as is G, our target feature. In case two, um, our target feature is absent, um, as is as it is in case three, right? So we're representing the absence of a feature with the tilde, so we can think of this as G is not present. Um, and if we look at our definition, it's important that we notice that we're looking for cases where G is absent, right? And in those cases where G is absent, we're looking for whether or not the candidate feature um, is present. And if it is present, that means we can eliminate that candidate feature as a sufficient condition for G. Um, and if you look in case two, we see that both B and C are present there, and G is absent. And that means that we can eliminate both B and C as sufficient conditions for G. And then if we look down in case three, we notice that A is present when G, and G is absent. And that means that we can eliminate A as a sufficient condition for G. That leaves open uh, D though because based on the definition again, um, D is never present when G is absent, right? So in any case where G is absent, D is also absent, right? Um, D is present in case one, but G isn't absent in case one. So again, D passes the test um, and so we can say that D is a sufficient condition for G. It's important to realize, however, that this is just based on the data that we have, and here there are just three different cases. Suppose we were to add a fourth case, and in this fourth case, um, we had A absent, G absent, and B, C, and D present. If we were to add this further data, then D is no longer a sufficient condition for G, because now D is present when G is absent. So that important point to recognize here is that when we're saying something is a sufficient condition for something else, it's only based on the data that we have, right? Further data could reveal that, you know, something that seems to be a sufficient condition isn't, right? So it's all always relative to the data that we've collected.